Welcome to the Army Combat Fitness Test 2.0 Facebook Live. Uh, we're going to start with opening comments from Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Grinston, and then introduce our panelists. Sergeant Major of the Army. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. This is a, you know, I got a series of firsts. This is uh, our first Microsoft Teams through Facebook Live. So I appreciate everybody tuning in today and hopefully uh, this will go smoothly. We've got a great forum, we've got a great panel and we've done this about six or seven months ago. So for everybody that's tuned again, tune in again, I really appreciate it. As we return to a physical fitness test, um, we just published the Army Directive, and I just want to be uh, make some clarifying points is that when we return to a combat fitness test or a physical individual physical fitness test, we want to make sure that the individual fitness test is the current physical fitness test. That doesn't mean that we're starting next week. So all the policies and procedures are still in effect meaning uh, we've uh, postponed until further notice that, um, you know, the APFT and the ACFT has been postponed. Uh, so we're not taking those as an Army yet. So that that directive still is in place. But the, the new Army directive uh, ensures that when we get started back, we will actually take the Army combat fitness test. Some folks um, may not have been doing in, uh, unit training. Some were doing small units. But when we come back, I want to ensure that everybody is training to the new test. And that's why we've made the decision to go to the Army Combat Fitness Test, not to take another APFT and then go back to do something with ACFT. So that's important is that uh, from now on, the test of physical fitness for readiness is the Army Combat Fitness Test with only one exception. That one exception is if you have not passed a current APFT, you will have to go and are required to have a valid APFT. And then once you have a valid APFT score, that score will last until March 22. So there was some confusion on the March 22 date. That date means that I have taken my APFT, that's it. And then that will carry me out to March 22, uh, unless we you know implement another change but right now a bft will last till march 22 but you have to take the army combat fitness test in october or when your unit says it's deemed necessary to start those in so what that means is uh, you're required to take an individual fitness test um, and that test will be the army combat fitness test um, we've made one minor change and it's 2.0 so the Army Combat Fitness Test 2.0 signifies that this is just a change. It's an evolving, it's gonna be the future. And we may have another version of this as we go forward. And that's why we, uh, we have the flexibility in the plan um, to look at this over time, but it's very important that we all take it and understand that this is ACFT 2.0. And what that means is one minor change is that uh, you will be required to attempt a leg tuck, if you can't do it like this, in order to pass, you could do a plank for two minutes. And this is a temporary event uh, to build those core muscles and um, to get you to do the leg tuck. And, and we've already talked about um, the passing score for the APFT. Um, so you're, you're kind of, this is it. If, you, uh, if your unit doesn't take another APF individual test before October, you will no longer take another APFT. It's uh, good news. Uh, I think it's good news for me. I'm ready to move on. Um, and lastly, uh, I know we've got a lot of great soldiers out there doing great things, uh, but I do want to have a shout out to Sergeant Amanda Hunt out of Fort Sill uh, for her Wednesday workout videos and all the soldiers helping soldiers to succeed in, in the Army Combat Fitness Test. I want to say thank you for all that you do. Okay, moving over to Major General Hibber. Okay, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for uh, for attending the Facebook live session today, and uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston for inviting me to participate with this. You know, uh, evolution and adaptability are the cornerstone uh, of our fall. You know, and the Army Physical Fitness Test has served us well for four years, but really, it's it's through our improved understanding of uh, exercise science 
and physical training that we transitioned to the ACFD 2.0. You know, the, the Army Combat Fitness Test will strengthen uh, our fitness culture. It'll reduce injury. It'll increase Army readiness. Uh, and it'll also... ...reduce speed, agility, coordination, flexibility, reaction time, and our aerobic capacity to be prepared uh, for the battlefield of the future. You know, and that's hard to measure those components of fitness in a single... Yeah. The ACFT is best we measure those 10 uh, components of fitness. And so I'm excited that uh, the Army is transitioning. I'm sorry, excited to be in the Army when we do this transition. And I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Moving over to Major General Gervais. Hey, so good afternoon, teammates. And first of all, thank you, Sergeant Major of the Army and Major General Hibbert, for inviting me to sit in on this uh, panel discussion. So I'm Major General Maria Gervais. I'm the director for the Synthetic Training Environment Cross-Functional Team. I've been in the Army for 32 years, so I have uh, been under the Army Physical Fitness Test for my entire career. And, you know, I've prided myself in being in great shape. You know, I've maxed the APFT pretty much throughout my entire career, but the run, the sit-ups, the push-ups. I've also done other exercises, you know, to increase my fitness whether that was the elliptical, whether it was weight training or whether it was a uh, biking. So I thought I was uh, pretty strong until we actually did a walkthrough of the Army Combat Fitness Test. And when we did that walkthrough, you know, what I found out is one, I wasn't in the shape that I thought I was. I wasn't as balanced in terms of power, in terms of strength, in terms of flexibility. I, have, I had lost a lot of flexibility and explosiveness and in addition to losing core strength. I found out that I didn't have, you know, I hadn't used some of the muscles that I needed to be using in such a long time. And I also found out, you know, that I had lost a lot of things such as hand strength when I tried to do the leg tuck. And I didn't have that hand strength. I didn't have that endurance to hang on to that bar. And so I also found out that, you know, I just didn't have the endurance on some of the exercises that I was doing or the explosive power that was needed to do some of the Army Combat Fitness Test events. So as I started my training, I did just like any other, all of us do in the Army, right? What I did is I said, okay, I'm gonna hang from that bar. I'm gonna try as many, uh, many leg tucks as I can. I'm gonna throw that 12 pound medicine ball as many times and I'm just gonna get stronger doing it that way. And also, you know, I was just going to try and do the drills. But what I found out is I actually had to step back and I had to think about how to prepare for this event. I had to start small. I had to understand how the different muscles worked. I had to come back. I had to get better flexibility. I had to get in terms of hand strength. So I had to build that up by just hanging on the bar. I also had to do some negatives to make sure I could pull myself up. And quite frankly, it took me about three to four months to actually be able to do the leg tuck. But now I have the flexibility, I have the power, I have the strength, and I have all those muscles working so that I can do this. It takes time to prepare. This isn't like just going out and running your two miles, doing the push-up and sit-up. You kind of have to change the way that you approach this mentally. But it can be done with time and preparation. And so today, I've kind of made a lifestyle change, and I feel much stronger than I ever have before. I feel like I have the strength and the flexibility necessary, and I feel like I'm better prepared to execute the mission than I have in 20 plus years of being in the Army. So I look forward to the discussion, and I'll turn it over to the moderator to introduce our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now heading over to Command Sergeant Major Smith. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Sergeant Major, for allowing me to be a part of this uh, Facebook Live. Um, just like General Gervais, I would, after 22 years in the Army and three kids, I, I've been there. I've been that PT stud that after I had that baby, I had to start over from the bottom and work my way back up. Um, even going like you have to prepare like immediately because you have school. So I've done that a few times. When I first took the ACFT, I went into it thinking that, hey, I'm a PT stud. I, I scored 290 to 300 easily. And when I went and took it, I was actually embarrassed. I could not do a deadlift and I could not do a leg tuck. I didn't know the proper form for a lot of the exercises. And what I found out is that it took strength, endurance, 
mental agility. It took power and doing the regular APFT, just push up, sit ups and run. I didn't have any of that. So I had to start progressively small. In September, I, I couldn't pass it. By February, I could do two leg tucks. I can lift 160 on the deadlift and I could pass all six events, which was a major accomplishment for me. But just like the general said, it took, I had to step back, look at how I was trying to achieve these things and realize that it was a full body workout that I needed because I had to tone and increase and reactivate those muscles that I had not used in so long. Like for instance, having that C-section, I no longer use my hip flexors. I use my legs to do sit-ups, which did slow down my run. But having to do the ACFT, I realized that it had to be a total core exercises that I had to do. I had to build up my lats. I had to build up my latissimus dorsi, my pectorials, everything. So this is achievable. And I actually am excited because I realized I use less energy taking the ACFT than I did doing the APFT. And also the injuries that I used to have and feel from that pain, I didn't have it once I started working out for the ACFT. So I actually look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergeant Major. Um, okay, we're going to head to our first question, uh, which is from the Sergeant Major of the Army's Twitter feed. It is, where is the updated and changed postpartum plan along with the implementation of this new PT test that your panel promised uh, eight months ago? Have you done the research on what happens to a woman's body while they are carrying their child and after and trying to prep for this test? Uh, Sergeant Major of the Army, we'll start with you, and then if you wanted to pass that over for follow-up follow comments. Sir Major, this is Major General Gervais. You're speaking, but we can't we can't hear you. There you go. Okay, there you go. Uh, two mute buttons later. So um, thank you. I am, um, appreciate the question and uh, the comments. Um, the reason I'm smiling is uh, because um, you know I, I actually had the same exact problem. And some people say, well, Sergeant Major, you scored pretty well. Well, that, that was after like two years. So um, the first time, you know, I'd really done a deadlift in like 26 years was about two years ago. I'm like, okay, let's start with the bar. Um, and so there is a lot of progression here. So um, I think, you know, the most important thing is, you know, you just have to have an attitude that says I can do this. So I just want to caveat and I appreciate uh, everybody's comments on that. Now to the, the question specifically about postpartum, we've had a delay in everything. Um, so we were really looking to have that second set of data to tell us where we're at physically. Um, we're, we're definitely going to look at the postpartum, you know, is it six months? It's nine months. Uh, again, we, we still don't know because we needed more data. So I, I can't remember the specifics, but I think it was 76,000 people actually took the ACFT. Uh, uh, General Haber could actually give me the, the exact number. But what we needed was a million samples in order to, to make an assessment on do we have the postpartum amount of time right. So, uh, yes, we're still looking at it. Um, yes, we're going we're gonna to address uh, all the policies if we have to. Um, but we, we still we actually need the data. Um, that's why it's great that this is going to be the test of record. Um, that means everybody has to take it. You, you may not, you know, it's not going to pass or f fail you. You know, it's going to be flagged, but at least taking it will allow us to see uh, do we have all our policies correct? And that's why we have some flexibility in the plan. And I'll turn it over to any of the, the two people uh, that may have had some experience with this. Over. Uh, General Gervais, if you wanted to comment. Yeah, hey, thank you. Um, so, you know, I think w one of the things that's important is to understand is, you know, Every um, every woman is different, and as they go through a pregnancy and postpartum, we all ha handle it differently. And of course, we will all be guided by our medical professionals as we come through the experience. And so, as we go through it, you know, there won't be any. It'll be important to take it slowly based on your condition. But some of these things that you're doing as part of the ACFT will actually help you recover 
um, at a much faster rate based on the guidance from the medical professional. Um, so I, you know, I think that's important to recognize um, first and foremost. And of course, as the SAR major um, and General Hibbert will lay out, I mean, the data will help us drive the policy, but the circumstances and what the medical professionals say in terms of the individual and where they are will be the conditions that will allow um, the person, the individual to actually execute the ACFT. So, you know, policy is guidance. It's not a directive. And I think that's one of the things that we have to keep keep in mind um, as we're going through this. So, Sergeant Major um, Smith, I'll turn it over to you if you want to go ahead and add anything. Like the general said, you in order to get this, you you have to provide the data. So that means that some of us are going to have to go out there and take it. But first and foremost, the most important thing is, as she said, every woman's body is different. So you do need to involve your uh, per, your medical provider before you come out and you attempt these exercises because you may not be healed, you may not be ready. So follow guidance. As it, for me, you know. Um, I attempted it too early for the APFT and I actually reopened my C-section and had to go back and get it done because I didn't check with my medical provider before I decided to start exercising again. So it's extremely important. Hey, Sir Major um, Smith and General Gervais, I, I really appreciate your comments on that too. Um, and, and, and that's the good news about the Army is sometimes we want a one size fits all and it doesn't work and everybody's situation uh, is individually different and if if a doctor comes in and says you need more time it's very rare you know you know sometimes you know there's going to be you know some hard head that says yeah you know you're going to do it now but if the doctor says you need more time most of the time uh, unless you guys tell me or gals tell me that's wrong i mean we tend to listen i, I believe that's correct Okay. Uh, General Hibbert, did you have any comments for on a postpartum recovery? No, it, it, uh, SMA mentioned, you know, we're looking at the data side of the house and, you know, we've got 200,000 plus scores in DTMS on the ACFT, but when you look at it, a lot of the data we have comes from about 135,000 initial entry trainees that come out of TRADOC uh, and less than, you know, 2% of them have had, have had children. And so when you look at their data versus what, what we have in the Army, it's significantly different. And again, we'll, we will continue to look at it. And this also ties, and from my standpoint as the Commanding General for the Center for Initial Military Training, I'm also the proponent for holistic health and fitness and the ACFT. And so we are working with USARIUM and working with uh, Uniform Services uh, University and others as we analyze what does right look like again. Both for H2F and the ACFT, it's about rehabilitation, recovery, then testing. And I think we'll see that change in the Army. We're no longer racing to get a test. We are looking at how do I rehabilitate uh, those individuals, whether it's postpartum, whether it's a knee surgery, whether it's any type of event. It's about rehabilitation and returning to the fight, then test. And before, I think we, we often race to the test, as Sergeant Major uh, Smith said, we race to a test instead of race to recovery. And I think that's the mindset we're going to get to here uh, in the Army with uh, H2F and the ACFP. Okay, this is uh, uh, Sergeant Klutz. So we're going to move on to the next question. Thank you, sir. Will the record APFT still be administered in uh, during NCOA until October 1st? Okay, um, I had to uh, work through the the um, APFT um, has been suspended right now, so it doesn't. Uh, whether you take the APFT, uh, I don't think anybody's taken the APFT in PME because we kind of suspended all APFT. Um, but every location is in a different state, so if you know, Korea, who's moving out of this a little bit earlier, feels safe and comfortable taking the APFT um, for PME. Um, and some people want to. <laughs> so, um, but right now, as an Army, the directive is it's been suspended um, across the Army. 
Um, but that doesn't say that, you know, somebody in a different area based on their condition says, I'd like to go ahead and take one. Um, uh, I'm not aware of that uh, right now. And uh, General Hibbert, do you have any more on that? Uh, hey, thanks, Mr. Um When it comes to the, you know, the ACFT, for in the IET enterprise, we are still training for and taking the ACFT. We're not doing it. Um, again, we have a different population. We have a controlled population. Um, and so everybody who comes into IET is quarantined or controlled monitored for two weeks. Once they get inside the bubble and they're confirmed COVID free, we are testing, training and testing uh, functional fitness in the ACFT so that the goal is every trainee or every soldier you get out of IET has taken and passed the ACFT to help the Army transition to the ACFT. Uh, prior to the stop of uh, uh, the pause in testing, uh, all, almost all PME and even at an NCO, we asked to transition to to train and take the ACFT. Uh, it was not for record in, uh, in the past year, but it's to now introduce uh, all our non-commissioned officers and officers of all three components to the ACFT if their unit hadn't transitioned. It's about awareness and taking it, um, but I, it's not required right now. Um, and for those several courses that has been suspended minus IET. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is for SMA Grinston, and it's really just a, to summarize a number of questions. Is the Army uh, reviewing the height and weight standards at this time? Yeah, I, I, I frequently get this question, um, and I'm going to say uh, no. We're not reviewing the height and weight standards at this time. So uh, our goal was to start with the Army Combat Fitness Test. Um, and then as we look at holistic health and fitness, I am trying to, there's two, you know, there's three components. We've been talking about this for a long time. It seems like we've forgotten about the other two. Um, you know, we, we talk about nutrition, <laughs> physical fitness, and then their sleep. I mean, that, that kind of brings all that together. And I think if you mess up one of those, one of those other two, it's equally as bad. Um, if I don't sleep and then I try to do my physical fitness, it's a degradation. Um, if I don't eat right, uh, I'm not going to be as healthy as I can be or should be. Um, we're not reviewing up or down. Um, um, there's usually an implication uh, that when we review it, we want to increase it. Um, that's not the plan and we are going to review it, but what I want to do is get the data um, from the ACFT on how we're doing performance wise. And then the second piece is on the nutrition is do we have the nutrition right to rebuild the muscles to make us more fit soldiers in every six months uh, for the last, well, almost a year now. Well, I've done two turns of do we have our nutrition right and that's a worldwide with every warrant officer, uh, nutrition specialist, camp post stations around the Army across the globe. So the answer to your question is right now, no. Thank you, SMA. The next question is for Major General Hibbard. Why is the 2.5 mile walk as an alternate event being dropped? The bike, swim and row require facilities and equipment. The walk can be executed in a more timely fashion with no need for equipment or facilities. Okay, it really goes back to, you know, as we look at this, again, my job is looking at the science and working with, uh, with industry on this, and the scientific research has validated the importance of aerobic fitness uh, to common soldier tasks. And aerobic fitness is measured by, you know, working at a sufficient intensity to raise and sustain your heart rate at an elevated level for an extended period of time. And the, and the two and a half mile walk in the APFT didn't require that level of intensity to meet the uh, aerobic threshold uh, of the minimum requirement. If we changed your pace to the point where it raised your heart rate enough, you were running. And so it didn't do us any good. It, it, it's not a good measure of aerobic fitness. And so the intent of the uh, non-impact aerobic events which you mentioned the, the swim, the bike, and the row for those soldiers on a permanent profile, and those are only for the ones on a permanent profile, is to measure the adequate level of aerobic fitness. And that's to raise your heart rate uh, to the level where it can be measured. 
And so we attempted to match the aerobic fitness requirement of the two mile run in those three events. Um, and it also drives the, uh, those aerobic events require a regular and a progressive commitment to aerobic training in order to sustain that level of aerobic fitness. So hopefully that answered your question. Thank you, sir. Uh, this this question again, uh, we'll start with uh, Major General Hibbert and then and then go around. Uh, what do you foresee being the biggest issue currently present in the implementation of this new fitness test? And how do you think it will affect soldiers uh, readiness in non combat quote non combat MOSs? So we'll start with uh, General Hibbert and then and then go to SMA and uh, and General Gervais. So, you know, I don't think there's going to be a big hurdle to implementation. I think the challenge of it all will be just changing uh, fundamentally of how we do PRT and how we look at physical fitness. Um, because it's going to require us to do more than just do, as mentioned, I think uh, Major General Gervais or uh, Command Sergeant Major Smith mentioned, that it's more than just getting up in the morning now and just doing push-up sit-ups in a two-mile run uh, for our normal PRT. And so we're going to have to get creative in the ways uh, to do our functional fitness training. Um, and we're going to need to look at ways both with and without equipment um, in order to drive the the complex movements uh, to build the, the strength and the other components of fitness that are going to be necessary to be successful. And we will be a much better army for it, um, especially as we look at the, you know, now look at BCT for an example, as I get to see every BCT graduation. Um, by changing the functional fitness, uh, and changing the way we're working out. We are driving down injuries for initial entry trainees. We're driving down lower uh, lower extremity uh, musculoskeletal injuries because we're worrying about building muscle, building strength, and simultaneously with improving our run times and the other components of fitness, which is having second and third order effects for the benefit of the Army. So I think the biggest thing, again, is just changing the way we're, we're continuing to work out and adapting that across the entire Army not just COMPO 1 in our test battalions initially. Thank you, sir. Going over to SMA for a response. Uh, sir, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I, the hurdles, I think, um, from what I see, the hurdles are normally individuals, meaning we've changed the, we changed the physical readiness training model to PRT 10, 11, 12 years ago. It's a valid document, um, but what I'm saying is we didn't actually change because we didn't change the test. I don't think everybody went in and actually got stronger. They didn't do the, the exercises that are in the PRT manual. Um, so though, to me, that's the biggest hurdle. There are some fabulous um, exercises in the PRT manual that don't require weights and they build the required uh, strength, mobility, power, agility um, to do the, the ACFT, and they're already in the manual. So I think that one of the biggest hurdles is just uh, getting everybody to go back, review those. I mean, you can YouTube it now, and they'll say, hey, what exercises should I do? And a lot of those are just, you know, body weight. It doesn't, you know, doesn't say, oh, you know, grab this weight. Sometimes they do, but some of those are actually already in the PRT. So to me, the biggest hurdle is, um, it's just, you know, our, you know, sometimes uh, it's our ability to be creative and here's what the manual says and can I recreate that event? You know, I, if I, like right now, all the gyms are closed, you know, at Fort Myer. So is there a way for me to, to mimic that, you know, explosive power? Can I do a way to do a deadlift? And you see this on, you know, even commercials where, you know, somebody's got a, you know, a thing and, you know, some empty barrels and they got water in it or they put sand in it to do the deadlift. Um, so I think to me, our biggest hurdle is just um, being creative in how we train um, for the new physical fitness test. And now for soldier readiness, I think this, the whole purpose of this, I, I think is really miss, missed, is this is to actually make our army better and to make all our soldiers stronger to do the tasks that we've asked them to do, um, regardless of who we are. It's the tasks that we've been asked to do as an army are still the tasks that we've been asked to do as an army. And, it, you know, 
if you don't train physically for that and you don't have that, you have a propensity to get injured. Um, so now as we get more more explosive power, as we train harder, better at the core, as you know, Gervais says, it makes us a little stronger and you know, are less we're less injury prone as we get older, as opposed to, you know, run, 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 run. Oh, I've hurt my knee. Now I don't know what to do. Um, just total body fitness, I think, in my opinion, and that's the whole goal of this is actually make us a more ready force. Thank you, SMA. Uh, General Gervais, I'll give you the opportunity to comment. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, Sergeant Major, I'll agree with you. I, you know, I think change is always hard. Um, as you bring about change, we become comfortable with what we're doing. So, I, I agree with you. I think the hurdle, the biggest hurdle that we have is, um, is a cultural um, hurdle. And it's a mindset change that we have to take into account on why we're doing this and what it's going to do in terms of, of readiness as we look at it. And so, you know, understanding that we have to change the way we think about preparing for this test, we prepare to ensure for our readiness um, and we're able to execute our job. Because, you know, like I said, a lot of us can get up out of this chair right now and go execute the APFT and, and, and max it right now or start two weeks prior and still max it. But that's not why we're doing this. We're changing to the ACFT so that we can actually be able to do the things we need to do um, on the battlefield. And, you know, I, I feel pretty confident that I could probably do all those things previously, but probably would have done it once and probably have injured myself in, in, some, in doing the task. And so, you know, that wake up moment that I had when I kind of, um, you know, walked through that ACFT and found out that I wasn't as strong, you know, from and didn't have that flexibility you know, I'll never forget trying to do the deadlift, you know, and I never been a deadlift and I was just trying to squat down and I'm like, oh, the bar's down there somewhere, but I didn't have the flexibility to do that. But think about all of those tasks that I would have to do on the battlefield where I needed that flexibility. So, you know, I sit here proud right now because of the preparation going, I now have a lot more flexibility and strength to be able to do that. And I think, so I think the biggest hurdle is us ourselves and our, our, our cultural mindset walk going into this and and really understanding why we need to change so thank you ma'am uh star major smith give you the opportunity to comment as well just like the sma said you know first time i saw when you really think about it was 2006 when i became a drill sergeant uh, everything that's being asked of us now that's really when i was introduced to it when you look at your army warrior task and battle drills when you look at your metal task Everything that we're doing now fits into each of those activities that we were required to do as soldiers. So even if you're in a non-combat unit and maybe you don't have react to indirect fire or you don't have those collective or individual tasks that meet these, now the ACFT is putting everybody in the Army on the same playing field. So it doesn't matter what unit you go to, you should be able to exercise, execute these movements along with those tasks and do it without being injured. So it was like, when I looked at it from that point of view, I was like, what was I missing? 7-22 actually told me how to do the climbing drill, which is the leg tuck. You know, 7-22 has a actual schedule in it that takes you from reset to maintaining to progressing. But when you looked at all those pull up bars out there on the field, nobody was using them because we purposely, you know, negated staying away from anything that we felt was hard and went outside of push-ups, sit-ups, and run. So I, I just just look back at everything you've been required to do as a soldier, and you'll see that these six events were in each of those tasks that you've been required to do as a soldier, no matter what unit you went to. This is an SMA, and, and Sergeant Major Smith, you know, you're exactly right. Uh, but I do get this question every once in a while for those uh, non-combat units. Uh, sometimes I go, I'm not sure what units those are because um, I think no matter where we go in the world, we're going to have to be, even if we did large-scale ground combat operations, no longer is it World War One or Two where there's a line and then there's that rear area that everybody's safe. Um, it's just that that's not the way of the world anymore. So I think. Uh, 
when those indirect fire moments are going to happen, that's going to be every MOS. If you're a dental tech and you're out at, uh, you know, Bagram, you're going to have to react into every fire. Bagram's, um, you know, has almost been overran. They breached there. Um, they breached at other places. Uh, so I, I don't think there's a big safe zone where those, those, uh, those other, what we'd say are considered non-traditional, you know, infantry, you know, combat arms. I think everybody's going to, that's why we designed the combat, you know, war tasks and battle drills. We did this for a reason um, because uh, we, we just found folks all of a sudden were put in those ways and they never fired their weapons. They didn't do this. Their weapons weren't clean. So those are common tasks to all that, um, you know, we, we you know, the, the older generation wants to make sure that uh, every soldier understands um, these are your basic drills and we we'll make sure that uh, everybody comes with that skill and in the, the fear that you would have to use it. We don't want you to, but, um, you know, we, we got to be trained physically. We got to be mentally prepared for that and you got to have those war tasks and battle drills and that's common to all. Thank you, SMA. Uh, the next question is about nutrition and we'll start with uh, General Hibbard and, and go back to the SMA. Um, are we changing the nutrition education for the force as we change the way we train? General Hibbard? Uh, yes, we are. And so as, as we, in, you know, implement the ACFD, we're also implementing H2F across the Army. Um, and so beginning in, you know, FY21, not only have we changed the doctrine, we've rewritten 722, nutrition is a big piece of, of the doctrine now. Uh, the Army G4 is, is changing the nutritional requirements in the, in the defects around the Army. We're also educating it in, uh, in IET. But more importantly, as we start resourcing H2F beginning in FY21, we're putting dietitians down at the brigade level and the BCTs and other brigades in order to reinforce, educate, and help our soldiers understand the importance of nutrition um, as part of the fundamentals and components of holistic health and fitness. Nutrition just being one. Thank you, sir. SMA, if you'd like the opportunity to comment. Yep. Just very quickly is yes. Um, it's not only just an IET uh, initial entry training. Um, I've, I've gone and asked for BLC and how do we train this nutrition and fitness? So it's uh, progressive and sequential over time. So when I go to basic leader course, do I get a basic, you know, an advanced, a little bit more advanced on nutrition? And then as I progress through, are we building the leaders that understand holistic health and fitness, not just fitness and then nutrition? Um, I've even challenged them um, to say, you know, we're testing on 7-22, but we're, you know, it's only an extended rectangular formation for basic leader course. Can we do better? You know, can we, you know, can we build a sergeant that, uh, that understands uh, the components of fitness? Um, I know it's in there, so we're really challenging them that. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm really excited about having the dietitians at the, at the brigade. And it, it's going to take some time, but it, uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. SMA, thank you. Uh, the next question, we'll start with uh, SMA Grinston and move to Major General Hibbert. Uh, what happens to soldiers who don't pass standards for their MOS, but they still pass the next standard down? Do they get chaptered or do they have an opportunity to reclass? Yeah, right now the standard is the gold standard. So we have not implemented the uh, standards for anything other than the gold standard. So if if you're in, you know, if you're 11 Bravo and there's a higher standard for the deadlift, but you still get the, the gold standard right now as an army, there's one standard. Um, and then uh, I'll let General Hembert say, you know, do we phase this in and what that looks like? But uh, the going in uh, for March of October 21 or this year, I'm sorry, October 20 is uh, one standard, the gold standard. Yeah, in, in reference to the comment about, you know, the, the branch standard, your, your gold, gray, and black standard, depending on what branch you are and how and the high physical demands are required. Um, right now, that is the decision for the Army senior leaders in the out years. We have teed up uh, at the earliest, probably be 20, end of 22, FY22, um, going into 23, uh, based on the data. Um, our chief of Staff in the Army told us he wants to make sure that uh, 
our, our decisions are data informed. Um, and so we'll collect data over FY21 as we implement the ACFT and we'll tee up some options for the, uh, the chief. And if you know the current APFT, we've adjusted the standards, I think four or five times over the course of the, uh, the APFT. Um, and so as we get more and more data, as the Army starts taking it, as we start changing our training and it becomes you know, second nature to do the ACFT, we will look now at uh, what is you know ACFT 3, 3.0, 4.0 or beyond by the time we do that, uh, based on how the Army uh, culture has adapted to the new ACFT. Hey, sir, uh, sir Major, um, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll kind of tee this up too. We have seen now that we've implemented OPAD. So when there's a high physical man job, having a little bit higher physical demand standard to get into that MOS, we've seen improvement uh, through less attrition and less injuries because we actually had some differences because it was a high physical demand job. And, and sir, I know you got the data on that, but uh, I think that would be important for everybody to know about. Yeah, as, as we implemented, as we implemented the the OPAT, you know, the OPAT was is a is a test or a measurement of your physical capacity at the end of your training. So we'll use eleven bottles at the end of at twenty two weeks. Can we go from uh, initial entry to passing and accomplishing all the high physical demands of that MLS? And so that was our 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 our, um, our grade of whether or not we can get you there in twenty two weeks. And what we've seen over data to reference what the SMA mentioned is I'll use MPs as an example. And so, because MPs is a gray MOS, it requires a gray uh, OPAT score to, uh, to enter. And regardless of male or female, if soldiers enter the Army at the same OPAT score, they attrit at the exact same rate. And so for a gray MOS, if you enter and you've achieved the, the black on the OPAT, because you, you could run more shuttles in the time allowed and you could deadlift more, male or female, you had a lower attrition rate for MPs than those that came in at a, at a uh, gray standard because we had less injuries um, uh, throughout the duration of your training, and so we retained more soldiers. And so as we look at that as an example that, you know, the, the, the gold, gray, black requirements of your MOS, if we go that route, is, is really meant to make sure you can accomplish the high physical demands of that task without injury uh, when we ask you to do it repeatedly, not once, not twice, but in sustained combat, that you're in shape enough that you're not going to get injured. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. So we will. The, the next question is regarding equipment and the uh, reserve and the guard. We'll start with uh, the SMA, go to General Hibbard, and then uh, and then General Gervais and Sergeant Major Smith about potentially training without equipment right now. So the question is, can you please provide an update on units getting equipment? and how reserve and guard are supposed to train, especially during COVID-19, uh, Sergeant Major of the Army? Well, I think I think we're all kind of in that same boat right now. Um, so whether you're active guard or reserve, I mean, I don't, right now I'm not checking, I get any advantages uh, if I'm in the active component. I have, there's, there's no gym facilities open on Fort Myer. And, and there's no, I mean, I, I'm not sure if there's any uh, advantages or disadvantages right now being active component. And most people say, well, I'm a compo two and three, you know, how do I get physical fit for this? Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I think what it goes back to what I said before, there's a lot of great exercises in those manuals that we have not used before. I think the only, in my opinion, um, because my my you know my gym is closed um, and there's none open anywhere in all of DC or Northern Virginia that I can find um, and I wouldn't do it anyway is um, maybe a pull bar um, and then sometimes I get creative you know some tree limbs to do some leg tucks um, um, I have to admit I drilled a couple of anchor boats in my ceiling and then I put a little bar there. Um, so uh, again we have to look for creative ways uh, to do that and. In my opinion, that was that was the one thing that I had to get a little bit more creative uh, was uh, the, the the climbing drills and those leg tugs. Um, most everything, um, I think I, I feel fairly comfortable with that I, I have still maintained a decent regimen 
where if I were to take the ACFT right now, um, with with I have there are no beaver fit, there's no connexes on Meyer that are open, there's no nothing. And the only thing I have is any weights that I would have in my in my own house. Um, is that I would still uh, pass and um, and I'm always my goal is to get the max, which I'm not, which I am not there yet. Um, I could still achieve a um, uh, a higher standard, and I, and again, I don't I don't have any you know special physical fitness and stuff in my house. Um, now for the equipment specifically, right now, and uh, I'll pass to General Hubbard. I I believe that we will be finished with all components worldwide of physical fitness uh, equipment issued, or at least at your locations by the end of June. Estimate is General Hubbard. You're correct. Uh, right now, KCOM is 95% uh, complete on uh, distro of the equipment across the Army. Um, when I say complete, uh, it may not be at the individual armory or uh, unit location yet. It may be at the central distro uh, position with either within that state or uh, that area, or maybe on Fort Hood, but we haven't picked it up by the individual unit yet due to COVID. Uh, but it is all pre pod so as we come out of virtual IDT weekends, and we get back to 100% inside of our of our units. Uh, the equipment is there for pickup by every single unit. And right now, 100% uh, of the equipment will be out uh, no later than the end of June, uh, just awaiting for units to pick it up once they return to work based on COVID. Thank you, sir. Uh, going over to General Gervais, if you had any comments on training without equipment during uh, the uh, COVID-19 response. Yeah, so, you know, um, I'm stationed down here in, you know, sunny Orlando, Florida. Um, we're not near an Army installation. Um, our gyms and um, YMCAs have also been closed. But I, I do think there are a lot of variations that you can do, you know, with equipment and without equipment. I mean, first of all, we've already mentioned that there are a lot of great exercise in the manual that is using your body weight um you know to to do the exercise i think if you also go on you on youtube and you can find a lot of resources on youtube that can give you a lot of different exercises that you can do you know the simple ones that will help you get to the complex movements things like resistance bands you know resistance bands offer you know have different variations and can allow you to do a multitude of exercises I've always had a uh, pull-up bar um, throughout my, um, probably for the last 10 years, but as uh, Sir Major Smith uh, mentioned earlier, sometimes we don't do the things that make us uncomfortable, so that pull-up bar didn't get a whole lot of use until probably about eight months ago, so I now have pulled that out and, and now using that a lot. But there are a lot of things like hit exercises that you can do. You can also do things like, you know, um, I, we had sandbags that had been filled in preparation for hurricane coming season. So using those. So there's lots of different ways that you can create, you know, the effect that you're trying to achieve um, to prepare for the ACFT. So I'll turn it over to Sergeant Major Smith. Just like everybody else during COVID, you know, the gyms are closed. So I, I had my kids save the milk jugs. You know, I use the milk jugs to do uh, rows with, to do lateral raises. I, I have a pull-up bar also. I keep one at the office that every time I walk out of the office, I'm doing pull-ups. I'm doing like le bringing my legs up, leg raises. I have one at home. Every time I go to the bathroom, you know, I'm, I'm using that. You can set some cones down, do Use your MFTs and your units to develop exercises where the soldiers can use body weight. Since we had minimal manning, we had one of our NCOs that was trained to do the ACFT come up with a plan. We passed that out to everybody. Hey, this is what you do. Use your body weight to do these exercises. This is the opportunity for you to employ those in your units to become creative and, and develop exercises that everybody can use, whether it's with equipment or without equipment. So we can do this. Just, just get at it. it you use Pinterest. If you don't have it, Pinterest has a ton of exercises for every part of your body. Know what you're trying to work on, break it down and make yourself a schedule throughout the week for what you want to work on. That's the best way to get at it. Thank you, Sergeant Major. Um, OK, we are about to we've got 10 minutes left. We're going to go to closing comments, starting with uh, Command Sergeant Major Smith. 
Moving over to Major General Hibbard, or excuse me, General Gervais, then General Hibbard, and then uh, the SMA. So uh, Sergeant Major Smith, if you had closing comments. So uh, I, did, I, I just want to say that I know everybody's scared. It, it's an unknown thing. Too, so many questions are unknown, but it's possible. If I can do it and start from nothing, you can do it and eventually graduate to your greatest potential. Right now, the SAR majors put out is the gold standard. The gold standard just takes probably three to six months and, and you will be there. Do those things that you know you need to do. I, I, one thing for me, especially if I'm going to be to have more weight on me, I know I need more strength. So with that, I started working on my strength. I wanted to give up a few times, you know, because I thought it was hard, but I'm a leader. And as a leader, I have a hard time failing. So I just kept pushing myself. This is possible. So instead of saying how much we can't do, let's start saying what we can do. And we can all do this. If you know me, you can hit me up anytime. I will give you advice. I will give you my plan, what I use. I will tell you where to start from A to get to Z because I've also become smarter when it comes to physical fitness, nutrition, diet, just for myself and to help the soldiers in the unit. So believe in yourself, it, it can work. We're all gonna get through this. We don't even need it till March 22. We can do this in probably about 12 months. I know we can, because we are the army and MPs lead the way. Thank you very much, Sergeant Major. Uh, heading, heading over to uh, General Gervais. Yeah, hey, thank you very much. Um, so, you know, I was um, offered the position on the panel because I'm the seasoned um, individual. So just equate that to one of the older individuals on, on the panel. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I found throughout this process, I mean, first of all, look, just give it a try. Give it a try and see what it ex it is about and then help that I, to identify your weaknesses. And don't be afraid of the weaknesses because there are a lot of tools and there are a lot of exercises that you can do slowly over time that is gonna help you to achieve, you know, whether it's the, the, the leg tuck gold standard um, and, and meet the requirements or even better. But don't think about it as just meeting that gold standard because you have to. Think about how it's gonna make you a you know, one, a better person from a lot lifestyle change, make you stronger, make you have the power, make you have the flexibility, and then that will translate into being able to do your job better. And there's, everybody's in this together. And what I, what I found is when I started with the ACFT and I started preparing for it, I actually found it very refreshing to have so much um, diversity in my training regime and the ability to work on it. And it became less of thinking about, I have to do this and I want to do this because it makes me a better soldier, a better leader and a better person in the long run from a health perspective and a physical perspective. And I'm gonna do a better job at my, um, I do my job better. So I'll turn it over to uh, General Hibber. Yeah, thank you, General Hibber. You know, in both what uh, you and uh, Man, Sergeant Major Smith talked about it. It, it. This is a change in culture, and the change in culture doesn't happen overnight. Hence, how uh, Sergeant Major of the Army and the Army senior leaders came up with the phase-in plan for the ACFT, because we are we are changing culture, and we're changing culture across the, all three compos. So I did cringe a little bit when uh, Man, Sergeant Major Smith said Pinterest to find workouts, because we have a lot of Army, you know, apps and stuff out there. So if you're looking for uh, you know, training apps and things like that. We do have a, a PRT app uh, created by the uh, CIMT and the Physical Fitness School. It's got the kettlebell on it. We also have the Army Combat Fitness Test microsite that has all the resources on there as well to include, I think, the draft uh, 722-1, ATP 722-1 and 722-2 are on there. And what we did, unlike the old manual, is we broke out to an Army training publication all the workouts, everything that the uh, Sergeant Major of the Army and everybody was talking about, about, you know, climbing drills and everything, it's in that ATP in a consolidated uh, condensed packet as we go. We also have, as we look at uh, YouTube, it's a great resource. 
Um, and during this COVID environment, we've had the physical fitness school doing daily workouts there. So depending on what your, if you want a general workout, if you have a, a weakness in an event, let's say it's the, um, the deadlift, it lays out how you can train uh, without equipment, how you can train with equipment, everything there done by, with videos from uh, our physical fitness school. So there's a lot of resources as we go. And I know there's some angst and a little bit of uneasiness if, if you look, because there's a little bit of ambiguity in some of the policies as we do the implementation here, but it was kind of done on purpose as part of the phase-in plan because our Army senior leaders, having sat in several meetings with the, the Secretary of the Army, the Chief of Staff of the Army, and the Sergeant Major of the Army, have talked about making sure that as we move forward, this is going to be a one Army policy for, for the ACFE as we implement. And so we are going to need a little bit of data and a little bit of time to do that. Um, but it, it's the, for the best intentions of the entire one Army as we go forward, hence why we're doing the phase in plan. So with that, over to you, Sergeant Major. Uh, Sergeant Major Smith, General Gervais, and General Edward, uh, first, let me say, uh, I really, truly appreciate uh, joining me in this um, endeavor. Um, the first time we did this, we just had some Sergeant Majors up there, and um, what you brought to this conversation has been insightful, and Sergeant Major Smith, you're you're like the winner of the day. You know, everybody, every time the panel member you know you got one that you you really like the comments most uh, i'm sorry you're the winner ma'am you know it's just the honesty that you provided to the group has uh, been invaluable and i personally liked it so i really appreciate that um I, I know there's a lot of angst this is culture it's um you know it's change it's everything it's all rolled into one it's right and it's like why now why you know we got all these things going on and, and the world is uh you know, through hardship uh, is opportunity. Um, so, um, you know, that's how we are as an army. We, we look for ways we can make our army better. Um, and don't, we can handle more than one thing at one time. I know we're all going through a lot, uh, whether it's the pandemic, civil unrest and something else. Uh, some would question, well, you know, why now? It's like, um, why not? Let's, you know, as we move the army forward, let's move forward. Um, let's not go back and do what we used to do and keep doing it and expect different results. Let's let's move the army forward. Um, so I, I think right now is it's a, it's a good time. I know we're all challenged, but uh, we can get through this. Like Sergeant Major Smith, we can do this. Uh, uh, so I really appreciate that. Um, there's a lot of Facebook groups. There's a lot of different groups. Um, I, you know, I, I like those. And uh, you know, find your center. Find those folks that can help you. What works for me may not work for you. What works for General Gervais may not work for, you know, Sergeant Major Smith. There's a lot of groups, uh, and, and I really appreciate all those. Um, and I'm glad we have places where we can all come together uh, through some kind of visual means that uh, we can get advice for. It. And, I, you know, for all those groups that are out there, um, for positive ways that you can support each other, uh, no matter what group you're in, um, I'm all in. Um, so I really appreciate uh, all the collaboration on this because uh, we can get through this. So um, this is this is really great. Um, as I close, I do want to say there, there's been, uh, you know, we're still looking for uh, PFC Vanessa Guillen out at Fort Hood. Uh, she's still missing. And um, and uh, we've got a CID offering of $25,000 for any credible information leading to her whereabouts. So as it's all that we've got going on in the world that um, you know, um, um, we still have a missing soldier and um, we're still trying to, to find this soldier. And since we do have some folks on the net, anytime we can uh, share that and uh, help us find our soldier, I'd appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you for the panel. Uh, and let's stay healthy and Army strong. <laughs>